Study designs is another important topic which you have to know before your examination. It is a must know topic and among this cohort study and case control studies are very frequently asked. So today we will be looking at cohort study. So what is a cohort study? It comes under analytical study design and the definition of cohort is a group of individuals who share a common characteristic within a defined time period. So the example birth cohort, it implies all individuals born within a specific time period. Indications of cohort studies. So if there is evidence of association between exposure and disease, if exposure is rare, incidence of disease is high among those exposed. When attrition of study population can be minimized. Attrition means the loss of study participants over the course of time. And when ample funds are available. So the distinct in features so cohorts are identified before the appearance of the disease in question all right and cohorts are observed over time to determine the disease frequency among them so the study will proceed from the cause to the effect that is from the disease factors to the disease now we're going to discuss about the types of cohort studies so the types of cohort studies are prospective cohort studies retrospective cohort studies and bi-directional cohort studies so prospective cohort studies are studies that typically they begin in the present and they will continue into the future. Okay, now retrospective cohort studies. So these studies will begin after the outcomes have occurred. So the patients are recruited from past records and we will follow them over time till the present or some time before the present. So the quality of records is crucial in this retrospective cohort studies. Next is bidirectional cohort studies. So in these studies, these begin in the past, alright, retrospective. They are followed up till the present and they will be continued into the future till a specific time period. Now the examples, the Framingham heart study and, and the association between smoking and lung cancer. Now what are the disadvantages and advantages of this cohort study? So this is also asked as a sub-question of your essay question. So advantages are the incidence of the disease can be calculated, the multiple outcomes related to the exposure can be studied simultaneously, the relative risk can be calculated directly, and certain types of bias can be controlled, and dose response effects can be studied. What are the disadvantages? It is expensive because it involves a very large number of people, and it requires many years to follow up. And it is also unsuitable for investigating very rare diseases. It takes a long time to complete the study. So the investigators may die before the completion of the study. There are many administrative problems. There is extensive record keeping, laws of experienced staff, laws of funding. All right. Now, there is attrition of patients. That is loss of patients over time, as I said earlier. And changes may occur in the diagnostic criteria and the participant behavior. These are the disadvantages. Now we are going to see the elements of cohort study or essentially the steps in cohort study. So what do we do first? So selection of study subjects that is from the general population and special groups. So general population when exposure to the factor is common and its special groups we have selected groups that is examples doctors or those with insurance. And what are the characteristic features? So these select groups, they are homogeneous and they are accessible. But in exposure groups, okay, if exposure is rare, the cohorts may be selected because of the exposure to factor or agent. And it facilitates classification according to the degree of exposure and the duration of exposure. The second thing that we do is obtaining data on exposure from the cohort members. So that is through direct interview male questionnaires from medical examination or tests like BP, serum cholesterol, ECG, etc. We can also get the data on exposure from the review of records, such as we can get details of surgery, dose of radiation, and this can be obtained only from medical records. Okay, we can also do environmental surveys to obtain information on environmental exposure to chemicals or other factors. The next step, okay, this is the selection of comparison groups. So comparison groups, there can be internal comparisons and external comparisons and comparison with the general population. So internal comparisons, it is based on the degree of exposure 
prior to the onset of disease. Ex external comparisons use an external control group which is used for comparison. An example is smokers versus non-smokers. And comparison with the general population. This gives the mortality or morbidity experience of the exposure group which is compared with the general population. Now next step is, so we have discussed right, the selection of study subjects, obtaining data on exposure, selection of comparison groups and next is follow up. So we know regular follow up of these patients is required, of these persons is required and procedures will include periodic medical examination of each member of the cohort and we have to review their physician records, we have to review their hospital records, we have to do routine surveillance of the death records. We have to do annual telephone calls, we will have to do mail questionnaires or periodic home visits. And this will yield the most information, the periodic home visits. Because we are visiting them directly and asking them questions. So the last thing that we do is analysis. So analysis is performed regarding the incidence rates of outcome or disease among exposed and non-exposed. And estimation of risk. Okay, incidence rates among exposed is calculated as IE is equal to A by A plus B and it is expressed per 1000 people as we know incidence rate is the number of new cases by the total number of people, right? Now, among unexposed, that is IE, UE, it is C by C plus D. So, to understand what A, B, C and D is, we have to know what the 2 by 2 table is. So, this is the 2 by 2 table. which I'll be drawing here okay so here we have two rows and two columns and a b c d let's denote it with a b and c d okay so on top you always write the disease and here you will write the risk factor so here we are say we are comparing the risk of smoking and lung cancer so if we have to find out the incidence rate among exposed that is the number of people who are smokers and have disease. Okay, that is A by the total number of people who are exposed to the risk factor. That is A by A plus B. So the total number of people who are exposed will be A plus B. And the number of people with disease among exposed is A. So the incidence rate is A by A plus B. Similarly, the incidence rate among non-exposed will be that's correct c by c plus d so that is how we calculate the incidence rate if that is clear we'll move on to the next topic that is estimation of risk so in risk we have relative risk attributable risk and population attributable risk so in relative risk uh, it is a direct measure of the association of the strength of association between the cause suspected cause and the effect and it is the ratio of Incidence among exposed by incidence among non-exposed or incidence among unexposed. So this is relative risk. Okay, the calculation is incidence among exposed by incidence among non-exposed. So incidence among exposed we know it is A by A plus B and non-exposed is C by C plus D. So the ratio of both of this will be the relative risk. It is the direct measure of the strength of association between the cause and the effect. Next is attributable risk. This is also known as risk difference and it indicates how much of the disease can be attributed to the exposure. If 30% of disease is caused by X, 40% by Y and 30% by Z, a cohort study investigating the role of X factor X in D will report that 30% of D is attributable to X. So the calculation will be attributable risk is incidence among exposed minus incidence among non-exposed by incidence among exposed into 100 percentage it is in percentage what is the importance it suggests how much disease could be reduced by eliminating the exposure factor under the study next is population attributable risk so this answers the question let's say we eliminate smoking then by how much will lung cancer be the proportion of lung cancer be reduced in the population that is an example so that is population attributable risk and what is the importance it is used for health planning and prioritization so that is all about cohort study do subscribe and share with all of your friends because a lot of effort goes into these videos